Hi, I'm Marius from MS Photography and in today's video we are going to take a sneak peek at the brand new Photomate R2. Now R2 has the same features as the original Photomate but is jam-packed with new features. For this video I'll be using the Nexus 7 running Android 4.3. So what is new in R2? Firstly, raw encoding is embedded into the app. So you don't need to buy an extra extension like you had to do with the original Photomate. Then in the gallery view, you'll notice you can now see the star ratings as well as the color labels within the gallery view. And to enable this, just go to preferences, go to gallery settings, and then enable show star rating and show labels. Now the biggest improvements in Photomate R2 is within the develop module. You can now generate previews for faster editing by going to more options here at the top and choosing Generate Previews, which will speed up your workflow. Another increase in speed is that when you zoom in and zoom out while editing, you'll notice there's no real lag like in the previous Photomate. Photomate has got a very cool new look and feel, as you can see, just like Lightroom. So there's a ton of new editing options that we're going to look at in a few seconds. But everything has got its own tab, which is very cool. So for instance, if I go to Basics here, you're going to see it's opening up all the settings. Now this is a 7-inch device, and if you've got a smaller device and you're struggling with the sliders, a very cool trick that you can use is to just select the slider like that, move out of the slider onto the image and as you can see I can now slide on top of the image to control the slider which is making it easier for me to do. And then we are going to look at one of the latest additions to the editing functions here and that's called gradient filters. Now this is a very cool feature you can use this for your landscapes and for instance an image like this which I maybe want to bring back some of the sky. So I'm just going to um, select the plus right here, it's going to give me a gradient and it says put your finger down on the start point and drag to the end point. So I can start there and then I just drag to the end. Now when once you've selected your gradient you'll notice it's opening up here all the settings I can use and it's even got its own curves built in so this is awesome. I can now underexpose the sky and you're going to see I'm bringing back information in the sky section. I can go to Curves as well, and Curves has got a very cool overlay here, just like the previous version of Photomate. And then I can, for instance, control the contrast of the sky within only that section that we've selected. You can even go to the blue channel here, and you can even add more blue if you want to. It's making it a little bit unnatural now, but as you can see, that's also possible. And I can just click on the Curves to take that away. So that's the gradient filter and there's a bunch of more options in here but that's just a quick look at it. I'm going to close this section. The next one is the circular filter. So I'm going to zoom close on this image to get to that section where the balloon is. I'm going to open up the circular filter, add a filter and then you work it like a square. So I'm going to start from the corner there and drag the circle and then when I'm done you will see I've got another option here with or options I can use. There's also a size. Now you'll notice when I drag the size, I can change the size of the circle that I've drawn there. I'm a little bit skew of the circle, but I'm looking at my tablet from an angle, so it was a bit tricky to draw the circle. Now I can, for instance, go to exposure and I can control only the exposure in that section where I draw the circle. And then also I've got again a curves function. So I can now go here and control the curves for this or I can go to maybe say the blue channel and add some yellow if I wanted to and then I can control if I just take this curves away here I can control the size of this you'll notice I can make it bigger and you'll see the section that changing yellow is also becoming bigger there's also a softness feature so a lot you can do here to fine tune this then there's also a cloning feature. You'll see it's got clone there. I'm not going to do a complete cloning. It's going to make the sneak peek too long. But I can show you that you can choose the cloning section that you want to use. So I can move it, for instance, there. And you're going to see the, the part of the tree appearing there. I can also control the Y offset, like say that. 
and then you know, it just looks a bit funny with the yellow added in there but you can see the cloning features already working so that is the circular filter then there's another one a brush filter i just want to get an image that's going to work better so i'm going to open up the circular filter oh no, sorry not the circular filter the brush filter and then i'm gonna add a brush then you put your finger down at the starting point and then you start to paint again i'm painting from an angle at the moment so okay i got most of it painted correctly Again, you've got a size, you can check this, you can change the size of the brush you've got. And then for instance, I can now change the exposure again in this section. If I want to, I can make it darker, I can make it lighter. I can just go to curves as well. It's got its own curves built in and I can control the contrast in that section where I'm painting. So this really makes it very easy to edit only specific sections of this image and the nice thing I just want to close this curves I've opened up here the nice thing about this it's all non-destructive you can add more brushes or more circles or more gradients if you want and you can delete them if you want to you can also click on the pencil and you can edit the specific brushes you've added or the specific gradient filters it's really very very cool also a very nice feature if I go out of the valop um, for exporting, normally you would have to, every time type in your export settings, I can say go here, say multi-select, select all, and then choose the export icon. Now you'll see here, uh, I've already got a Facebook, a Hi-Res, and a network storage device um, export setting that I've saved. So when I choose the specific ones, it's changing the settings here to the specific export settings I've created. So you're saving a ton of time by just creating your own exports. So you change your settings here and just choose save export preset and that's that. Very quick and easy to use, very similar like you would do in Lightroom. Then there is also an image stacking function which can be used for noise reduction as well as HDR and lots more to be seen in the final release. Now, please note that I'm using a beta version of the software, so the final release might look slightly different. So that's that for this video, and I hope you enjoyed the sneak peek at Photomate R2. So also have a look at the Photomate website, which will have more information on the application, as well as more videos or detailed videos like this showing you how the application works so that's that from me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.